You might feel alone or scared or nervous, but actually there's a game master that is watching you at all times. Right now at the Canyon Library, it costs 10 cents a day if you're late on paying your library book. Now, that may not seem like a whole lot of money, but let's say you're going on a vacation for seven days. That can quickly add up. It's trees like this one behind me here that are especially a concern to the county commissioners. As you can hear, it sounds hollow, and that's a safety concern. This is what's making for dangerous driving conditions, in fact, in Amarillo from Thursday night at midnight until 6 a.m. this morning, there were nearly 150 wrecks. Live at the Van Buren Frightmare, Morgan Burrell, ABC 7 News. <laughs> this is almost unreal. Now officials at the National Weather Service are warning of these gusting winds. It's clear that a lot of damage has been left behind. As you can see behind me, a tree that fell over severely damaging this car right here. If you live on the west side of town and you take the loop to get to work, you're going to run into some issues this morning. What looks like a routine drop off for Apple bus employees quickly turns into a verbal attack. Sorry, you can't get up on the bus. Then physical violence. And as a bus driver calls for help, more violence. We need to call the police. Randall County First Assistant District Attorney Robert Love tells me he's seen this same video. That was a big part of the decision making process. We believed that there was one physical aggressor, and that was who we filed on Mr. Lucero. Now, it's the state of Texas versus Lucero. Once the Emerald Police Department and our office agree that the investigation is to a conclusion, we'll present the case to the Randall County Grand Jury, and then they will make the decision whether there is sufficient evidence to go forward to trial. But that's not all. Attorney Jeff Blackburn, who's representing the Apple Bus employee, tells me his client has serious injuries. Injuries he thinks could have been prevented. I can't think of a more shocking, awful thing to prove the point that the school district and this company have got to do a better job and keep people like this off of these places where kids are and off of places where an old man uh, can be beaten up. AISC Communications Director Holly Shelton says the incident has started up a conversation between the district and the bus company. That's an opportunity for us to really step back and, and evaluate what we're doing and ask ourselves those questions of what could we do, um, what kind of ways could we strengthen protocols. Today was a drill. Um, it's basically planning for our worst nightmare. A training exercise that teachers, staff, and faculty at River Road ISD hope to never experience firsthand. And then lots of gasps whenever it started and you started thinking, my goodness, this is real. This is so real. And then a couple of teachers getting emotional. The exercise was held by Potter County Sheriff's Office. It featured River Road SROs acting as the first line of defense. Familiar faces to the teachers who watched from a distance. This is your home. This is your family. And that's the way these guys are. This is their home. This is their family. These kids are their kids. No projectiles were used in today's training, but there were blanks fired. <laughs> Melbourne tells me they were just as loud. It just got dead silent. And I think that it just played on our emotions of this is reality and unfortunate fortunate situations that this is our reality as teachers and educators is that this happens a lot. A training no one wants, but one that could save your child's life. <laughs> Welcome to Highland Dairy. This is our, our livelihood. This is our 401k. Uh, this is everything we worked for. This is Art Scop's job 24 seven. It's his source of income, his bread and butter. Yeah, that's our retirement package, and as of, as of right now, they've taken that all away from us. What was once a full functioning dairy with over 40 employees is now a bare bones crew. Scop, alongside his son Ryan, are working to dry off thousands of cows. No one wants this milk. Our cows are quarantined, and we cannot sell the cows, so we have uh, no income on cows or milk. And because we can't sell the cows, uh, we are having uh, some of the older animals 
that are weaker are passing away and dying. These animals have been drinking water with contaminant levels that exceed the EPA's lifetime health advisory for humans. But Chris Segura says the advisory does not include levels for animals. The Air Force has exceeded the lifetime health advisory at three of the sampling locations. And those range above the 70 parts per trillion. Okay. Into, I don't remember the exact specific numbers on the top end of our concentrations, but above the LHAs. The Air Force says it is using groundwater, surface water, soil and sediment sampling, to map the potential movement of the underground plume. Can you ensure that this doesn't grow or spread? We're creating that forward presence and starting to program for our remedial investigation so we can have those answers in the near future. Do you know when that will happen? So the Air Force, in an effort to create a forward presence, has started to program these requirements in fiscal year 2021 um, in the event that promulgated standards are established so we can move on the cleanup and mitigation of this contamination.